The majority of people might think crabs are red or at least reddish because that's what cooked crab looks like. In the wild, crabs can be quite colorful. Some also have structures that make them quite unique. For example, male fiddler crabs have one exceptionally big arm, while carrier crabs, which I've talked about before by the way, have modified last pair of legs to carry stuff. So, with all the variations that crabs could have, surely there is at least one crab that have white coloration and with elongated arms that they used to fight, right? Maybe they are even hairy? Well, that's almost literally a Pokemon. There is no such crab in real life. However, there is a crab-like thing that fits the description actually, the topic of this video. So, let me bring up the question. What exactly is Yeti crab? So it might be obvious, but yes, just like crabs, yeti crabs are crustacean. They are decapods, meaning they have 10 legs, just like crabs actually. But now, if yeti crabs are not crabs, then what exactly is it? Well, taxonomically, they belong to the Anomura group, while the true crabs belong to the Brachiura group. Okay, hold on a second. What exactly is the difference between these groups then? Well, let me elaborate. Initially, walking decapods are divided into three groups, Makrura which means big tail, Brachiura which means short tail, and Anomura which means different tail. You know, same root as anomaly. What they mean by tail is actually not the tail tail, not the telson, but the abdomen, aka pleon. So lobsters have long pleon, right? That's why they are called Makrura. True crabs have very short pleon and it's also folded under their thorax, hence you hardly see them on images. Meanwhile, anomorans have a somewhat long pleon, but it's folded underneath, hence it's different from the other two. Anomaly. To put it very simply, in terms of morphology, they are between true lobsters and true crabs. That's why anomorans are also known as squat lobsters, because they look like squatting lobsters. But anyway, yeah. That's how you differentiate between true crabs and anomorans, by looking at their pleon. However, some anomorans underwent carcinization, a well-known term by now, but in case you didn't know what that is, basically it's when non-crabs evolve into crab-like form. Some anomorans like king crab for example, have crab-like morphology, in which their carapace is significantly flattened and white, and their pleon is significantly reduced. So that might be confusing for practical identification, right? But another way to differentiate true crabs and crab like anomorans is by looking at their legs. Anomorans looks like they only have four pair of legs. That's because their last pair of legs are small and usually hidden inside the gill chamber under their carapace. So yeah, if you look at yeti crabs, you'll notice that only four pair of their legs are visible. And they do have visible pleon when seen from above albeit short. Hence, anomorans. Yeti crabs belong to the Kiwaidae family, with only one genus, which is Kiwa. Apparently, Kiwa is the name of a shellfish god or at least deity in Polynesian mythology. Not self-ish, by the way. Shellfish. There are currently five described species of Kiwa. Kiwa hirsuta was found in 2005, published in 2006, Kiwa Puravida was found in 2006, published in 2011. Kiwa Tylery was found in 2010, mentioned in a publication in 2012, and finally described in 2015. Kiwa Araonai was found in 2013 and published in 2016. And the most recently published one, Kiwa Gemma, was just published in June 2024. There is actually at least one more Kiwa species yet undescribed to this day, or at least not yet published. Or perhaps I simply couldn't find the publication. Do tell me if that is the case though. Anyway, all of them were found and collected from different locations, including the undescribed one. Most of them were found around hydrothermal vent, but one of them, Kiwapuravida to be specific, was found on hydrocarbon seep. In case you never heard of hydrocarbon seep before, it's somewhat similar to hydrothermal vent, but it releases cold hydrocarbon rich fluid instead of hot mineral rich water. But yeah, both exist on the seabed along the fracture zone on the edges of tectonic plates. So who knows, maybe we'll discover more as we explore these zones. Next, let's talk about their morphology. But before that...
Yeti crabs are relatively small, usually not even reaching 10 cm long. They look white not because it's exceptionally useful to have that coloration, but simply because they lack pigment. Their eyes are very small, and because they lack pigment, they are most likely blind. We don't know for sure though. Another side of the Yeti name is, of course, the hairy stuff. Those are not true hair, of course. They are not mammal. Those are setae. These setae vary between species, actually. The first discovered Yeti crab, which is Kiwa hirsuta, have fine bristles covering their legs. Meanwhile, Kiwa purafida and Kiwa aronai have firm, almost thorn-like setae. Kiwa tylori seems to not have setae, but their setae are actually concentrated on their ventral side. So, to summarize, look at their dorsal side right here. If you can barely see any setae, it's Kiwa tylori. If you see fine and bristly setae on their legs, it's Kiwa hirsuta. If you see firm and somewhat thorn like setae, it could be any of these three. So, how do you differentiate these three then? First, let's focus on Kiwa gemma. For this one, the lateral side of their calipads don't have thorn. Meanwhile, the other two have thorns all over their calipads, basically. Now, for Kiwa purafida and Kiwa aronai, one easy thing that I could show you with this image is the rostrum, this part right here. The rostrum of Kiwa aronai is relatively short compared to both Kiwa gemma and especially Kiwa purafida. And yeah, that's the short and simplistic way to identify each of these five species. Of course, there are more diagnostic characters available so you could be sure if you somehow ever find one. It's difficult to show with the available images though, so if you want to know about those diagnostic characters, you could always check the publication of course, it's listed in the description. Well, some of them are not open access, so yeah, some might be difficult. Oh and obviously, I didn't talk about the undescribed species because, well, it's undescribed. It doesn't have a diagnostic character yet, so we'll see in the future. There might be some degree of sexual dimorphism in yeti crabs, especially the size of their chili, aka claw or pincer, however you wanna call it. There was a publication that showed the data and the analysis on the sexual dimorphism of Kiwa purafida, and honestly, I don't know how significant this dimorphism is, whether they have a practical function or not. I mean, I mostly do research on deer, and besides that, I mostly work with lizards and birds, which is why, when I hear the word sexual dimorphism, I expect something significant. Something pretty obvious, you know? And you might be the same. What I'm saying is, while the gap on this graph does not seem that significant, this might be significant enough in the context of crustacean, or maybe at least anomerans. Unfortunately, I couldn't really tell you how significant it actually is. You should listen to the opinion of carcinologists for this one. But anyway, let's move on to their lifestyle. Like I said earlier, most of the yeti crabs live on hydrothermal vents, but one of them live on hydrocarbon sea. As with many other animals that were found in such area, they tend to stick near the vent or the seep itself. Several individuals are often located aggregating together in one spot. In the case of Kiwa Tylori, up to 700 individuals have been found sticking to the vent's chimney. Oh, by the way, just to be clear, the shallowest water they've ever been found is at 1000 meters depth. So yeah, there is barely any light, so they don't really need a developed eye, most likely a very limited number of predators, so having a white coloration is fine, and a very limited food source. And that's where their unique traits come in, their setae. These setae are used to trap bacteria. The trapped bacteria can grow and proliferate by themselves. And what do the yeti crabs do to the bacteria? Well, they eat them. That's why yeti crabs are said to farm bacteria on their body. From time to time, they comb their setae with their third maxillipad and, you know, simply put them in their mouth. Their third maxillipad have comb-like setae which enables them to collect bacteria effectively. Based on their setae, different species employ different methods of collecting bacteria. Kiwa tylori have bristly setae concentrated on their ventral side. That's why they are mostly seen sticking to the chimney to collect bacteria on the chimney. Kiwa hirsuta have bristly setae on all of their legs, so they can passively collect bacteria while moving. Meanwhile, Kiwa purafida have firm setae, 
especially on their calipeds. That's why they are often seen doing this, the dancing movement. Oh my god, crap rave is real? Anyway, what they are doing right here is collecting bacteria, so not exactly dancing. It might also be useful to increase the productivity of the bacteria growing on their body, hence more food. That's not the only use for their long calipeds though. Kiwa Puravida had been observed fighting another individual and pushing the loser off the seat. Food source is very limited, so that's just the natural way, I guess. Oh, and the video itself looks kinda funny, especially with the 10 times speed because it looks like the winner do an emote right after the fight to show dominance or something like that. But I guess they are just doing the usual bacteria collecting gesture. And yeah, that's Yeti Crab. Even though they are quite famous at this point, we still don't really know much about them. That's just how it is with deep sea creatures actually. Oh and, let me just remind you that we still have one undescribed species, so that's something to look forward to at the very least. As we explore the deep sea, perhaps we'll find even more. But for now, let's just learn what is known. And that's all for now. Oh, by the way, some people intuitively think Crabominable is a yeti crab, while some don't think so because of the morphological discrepancy and the etymology. But to that, I would say, hey, it's Pokemon, no need to overthink it. Anyway, enjoy your day. Okay, so when I was editing, I showed this image to my friend, and she suddenly said, hey, that one looks like they have an emoji on their back. And I was like, what? And she was like, yeah, you see, it's like a smiley face, maybe even sticking out their tongue. And I was like, oh, oh god, now I couldn't unsee it. And she also said, the one next to it is doing the ooh face. And I was like, oh god, why do you have to say that? And yeah, now I'm pointing that out to you folks. That's all.